One thing they don't have here in Tassie, which they're very pleased about in fact, is windmill grass. It's a major summer fallow weed that's thrived in zero-till farming systems on the mainland, especially in the northern grain zone. Since developing resistance to glyphosate, windmill grass now poses an even greater threat, especially in central western New South Wales, where we head for our next report. It's a familiar sight along roadsides, and in recent years it's been seen a lot more in paddocks. Its botanical name is Chloris truncata, an Australian native grass species commonly known as windmill grass. When it's present in summer fallows, it can have a significant impact. Windmill grass is really widespread in the uh, central west of New South Wales in the southern part of the state. It's really hard to kill with key products like glyphosate and if you can't kill it, then it's going to rob your moisture that you need to grow the next crop. There could be linkages to, to nutrient, uh, on particularly nitrogen robbing, um, but there is also, I think, there's plenty of potential there that may also be harbouring disease and pests, which are affecting the subsequent crops as well. Trials by the Department of Agriculture and Food Western Australia revealed wheat yields could be reduced by 25% where windmill grass was left uncontrolled while trials run by the Grain Arana Alliance in New South Wales indicated soil nitrogen levels were halved, though an unusually wet season meant the impact on subsequent crops was difficult to measure. It's not just cereal crops that are affected. Lupins and canola also suffer. We've seen yield suppression of over 50%, you know, even 80%. You know, it's, it's turned a, you know, a quite an economic crop into something that's literally unharvestable or non-economic to harvest. Windmill grass is also known as umbrella, blowaway or star grass. The names refer to its appearance and the way it's distributed. The mature head breaks free from the stalk and the wind sends it tumbling across the paddock, distributing its seeds vast distances across large areas. In today's no-till farming systems, herbicides have become the primary weed management tool. But glyphosate isn't always successful at killing this weed. Windmill grass has a relatively high tolerance to glyphosate uh, and uh, they don't actually have other products that control it very well. So what tends to happen is everything else gets killed and they get left with windmill grass. And the news gets worse with glyphosate resistance developing. We've got two examples of resistance to, uh, to glyphosate in windmill grass. In fact, the weed presents so few effective herbicide options that controlling established infestations may see, for the first time in decades, a return of the plough. We haven't had tillage in the farming system for 15 or 20 years and as soon as you put it back in, you're opening up that farming system for wind and water erosion, the like of which we haven't seen since the 70s. The other issue is when we put tillage back in, we're degrading our stubble. That stubble's really important, as are the cracks in the ground to store water for the next, to capture water in the rain for, in the fallow period and to store that water for the next crop. The Australian Glyphosate Sustainability Working Group is on the hunt for solutions. The group resulted from a grains industry forum staged by GRDC in 2003, where it was agreed research into glyphosate resistance was crucial. The GRDC is right on top of this issue and realises that um, having good options to control fallow weeds is a key point in the sustainability and profitability of our farming system. So they're investing what's needed to be invested to try and find solutions. Like most weeds, we won't be, there won't be any magic bullets and it will be an integrated weed management approach that will be required to keep windmill grass at a manageable level. As a shallow-rooted perennial in lighter soils, windmill grass becomes moisture-stressed easily reducing the effectiveness of herbicide application during times of high temperature and low humidity. Moisture stress has seen uh, potential control levels of 90 plus percent collapse to 40 percent by delays in spraying and, and you know the occurrence of moisture stress. So it's, it's, it's a hugely important characteristic to consider when we're, we're looking at herbicide control options. What has proven to be the best control strategy has been to hit your seedlings early and not just once. Glyphosate does a, a, an okay job on seedlings, but what we've find, been finding is that a, a double knock strategy where you've got a glyphosate mixture first and you're following that up with a biperidol will give you better control of those seedlings. 
For more mature plants, you might need to pull out the big guns. By putting some tillage back in the system, we can do two things. We can overcome the, the, the clumps of uh, larger established plants that are already there and perhaps create an environment which is a little bit less favourable to subsequent germinations. It's a lot easier to control seedling plants. So this is why a number of growers are looking at using cultivation to control the mature established plants and then using herbicide to control seedlings. The message is clear. If you're in an area prone to windmill grass, increase your monitoring and act early. Because it can be such a troublesome weed, it's probably an important one for growers to be looking at whether it's surviving in their fallows. Uh, because it's, the seed heads are blown by wind, the places to look are really along the edge of paddocks in the initial stages and uh, you know, see if there's uh, plants growing along there. But it also does have a bit of a preference for lighter soil types, so that's another place to look. A decent rainfall event, 10, 15 mil, 20 mil, they should be out there looking for what's starting to grow and looking for opportunities to get high levels of weed control. Because when the plants aren't stressed, that's when they'll get the best control. With windmill grass a highly significant summer fallow weed, the Grains Research and Development Corporation will continue to support the Glyphosate Sustainability Working Group and fund state-based research projects. GRDC's investment in windmill grass research has been significant. And remember, there's loads of information on that and a whole host of other problem weeds at www.grdc.com.au forward slash weed links.